13 mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Speedway, thanks for listening to Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver number 17 Toyota in our NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, it's just nah, nah, it do, you, do you want to text it? Casey and say, oh, by the way? Yeah. I, I don't have Casey's number. I went through his... Oh, the last one. I told his PR. Oh, his PR group. Text her I guess we'll have to start clapping when he gets here. He answers the phone. But it's good that they got to be able to do that nowadays with the air titan. I mean, you think years ago it would have taken forever to be able yeah. to, to drive the tracks and get everything but together. You know, it's a simple idea how it works. I mean, you really wouldn't have. It makes you wonder who thought, thought of that. Right. Who sat down and thought, hey, if I do this, it could dry a track real quick? I mean. All you do is just blow compressed air on the track. You know, right. And that's, all, that's the thing is, is it's that simple. That's all it is. And, and it's, it's something so great. That's all I've ever done. Out. It sounds like, it sounds like a, an you easy task and everything, air. but you got to think these are the same equipment that goes from track to track. Mm -hmm. So you've got, what, 20 of them? I think mm -hmm. there was less at Martinsville because it was a shorter track. But uh, NASCAR... So they have that many of them? They have 20 of them? Uh, I think it's up to 20. Wow. Um, I'm not really sure, so don't quote me on mm -hmm. that. That's just what I heard. But um, like Martinsville, you didn't need as many because you're only on a half a mile track. Well, yeah. it would have been harder with that first generation where they have the track and trailer with the air compressors yeah, I, and the trucks at yeah. Martinsville. And they took it back to R&D from what I hear and just kept, you know, developing it until what they've got now. I wonder what kind of compressor they have on it. I was wondering, I mean, cause, I mean you're, gonna, you're never running out of air. Yeah. So, I mean, but nowadays you can drive that track and get it going. Yeah, that right. You know? It's just so, like having regular large compressor at your shop or right. well yeah you but know, I mean like either. if you use an air tool it, it depletes it pretty quickly and not if you got a big enough motor yeah but you that that's a lot though yeah. I and mean, you're talking about the amount of air that they're pushing out I mean but, I have a, a pretty thing, yeah. good if you size into the engine yeah. you got plenty of pressure you'll get plenty of pressure yeah, yeah they're also using the engine on the truck it's just because you can it's feel the wind on I mean I have an 80 gallon with a seven and a half horse and they can't keep up with just a couple tools and what they're trying to do is a whole lot of air to be pushed out. It, it would be very. The thing is, if you got small, up. small, teeny holes, you're yeah. going to get high pressure, and you only need about a 20 horsepower motor to it's pump like it. Putting a small brake line on it. Mm -hmm. Sure. You just, you do, but still, it's still physics. a lot of volume. Right. It's a physics thing, okay? I'm one of Jack's friends. I'm not this smart. This, this, <laughs> is what, this is what racing has become. We're worried about the jet drivers. I know. Oh no! Really, it was a real small thing. I'm just trying to take up time, oh, but you blame really them. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is ended if you start talking about how they try to track. So, so far, the only thing we've gotten out of this is that Tony got the pole. You know, no, no. no. Let's, let's talk and, about the okay, Friday night this, this, What about this, the, what we were talking about earlier with the how fast they are going on the track, and you said the average was like... Well, uh, they were doing between 212 and 215 today. That's uh, on the straightaways or a complete lap? Uh, I believe that was a complete lap. Um, from what I, I read... Uh, Boyer said he got up to 217, so that's Which pretty good. Said, yeah. Um, you know, testing at Michigan is where they were at. So uh, I believe Earnhardt did some uh, talking about how fast they went. Yeah. So that was um, from what I'm reading about 212 to 215. That's pretty good. And you said yeah, the average really last good. year was 180. The, the average lap was 180 last yeah. year. So that's wow. pretty crazy that they're getting up to that during, even though. Like well, that's just going to be this year because they're going to take some more Okay, hold on. I've, I've misread that. Uh -oh, it's hitting speeds between 212 and 215 miles per hour in the straightaways uh, and about 180 in the turn. So you end up taking those two. You're, so you're going to be 200. Yeah, you're going to be in the 190s. Yeah. So that's try to keep it under 200. Yeah, so when I heard that, I was like, wow. But yeah, so I was trying, trying to, to read all these notes before we went on. <laughs> but like it said, us, that adds 10 extra uh, miles per hour faster okay. yeah. than Thank last you. year's average. And that is actually pretty significant. Let's stop racing. It looks um, like they're racing the same. Hey, everything. Andy, how you doing? Oh, oh, pretty good. We'll go ahead and get you started early, I reckon. Since, since uh, yeah. they forgot the call. Didn't call <laughs> <laughs> so hang on a second. Let me put you on live. You take care of it. <laughs> that number, was that supposed to be Casey? That's what she gave me. Some guy named John answered it. Oh, mm. well. Andy. Hello. Look what you did. <laughs> Hello. Do you want somebody Do you hear me now? Thing? Where my monkey at? Uh, you miss it now, don't you? I see what you did. <laughs> He's not hung up on you. Hello? No, I hung up. You hung up on him. Good. Good. Good help hard to find. I tell you what, good help is hard to get. Well, let me tell you something. Go for it. Go for it. You know what it is? He's nervous because I'm buying tonight. Push the line. Hit speaker. Lord above. 
I, that's what I was doing. <laughs> but it did. Hello? He's really concerned. Oh. Yay, we have some form hey. of communication going on right now. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry about the technical difficulties. We're having troubles with the phone still. Okay. <laughs> they can talk race and they just can't answer our phone good. Hey, I don't think that. That's for those two to figure out. I, I, I gave up on working the phone a long time ago. <laughs> And, Andy, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the 2014 season. We've gotten two wins so far and a poll. Yeah, uh, we missed one of those wins and two polls, but you know we got a fourth place. We have a front row qualifying this past weekend that uh, made, made the best out of that, gets the lead on the outside. And, but that's just our goal, you know. Uh, the, the competition's real stiff on the Wheel and Southern Modified Four, and if you're want to be the best amongst them, you have to go out every week and try and dominate, try and qualify up front, and race up front, go for those bonus points, and so far the season's going really well for us, and hopefully we can keep up this momentum. Well, looking at uh, 2013 and going into 2014, uh, y'all definitely had some problems and issues last year. I mean, y'all came so close to winning so many races and getting close on the poles and everything, but uh, the words came out of your mouth uh, at one of the races, finally got the monkey off your back. If you feel like you've really get, got that monkey off your back and really gotten into the season and going good so far. Good clue to choose. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we came so close. We actually were in a position to win seven races in a row. Date back to the 4th of July race at Caraway last year where we tangled racing for the lead, uh, went to Bowman Gray the next week, got taken out by a lap car running second. So we were leading for the south with four laps to go with it. You know, an actual shot to win a whole race more than the info combined and end up on my roof. Then we go so tangly, we the most laps and DNF with a battery shorting out. Um, and, and then finally, we could shake bad luck and we went on a really hot streak there. We went three in a row and, uh, you know, we got to show all the race fans how good this team really is. And, and the momentum carried over to this year. I didn't even want to take the car apart in the off season, but. You know, Eddie Harvey and all the guys are real meticulous with their race cars. We took it right down to the chassis, new paint, made it look like a brand new car. Every worn out piece possible was replaced. But when the guys put it back together this year, they, they just missed beat and made it an even better race car than before. So if we got the calculations right, you've won, uh, let's see, five of the last six races? Five out of the last seven. Five out of the last seven, okay. And, and uh, you know, it was funny after winning Caraway. And then going to the Southern National, we just weren't happy. And, uh, you know, the guys in the, the shop just absolutely thought I was a madman. They said they'd never seen somebody so upset mm -hmm. losing two out of the last four, or a lot of the last six. <coughs> but, but then they, they, they understood, you know, as we unloaded the car at South Boston, really did our homework and didn't have to change a whole lot off the truck. And, the day just went real smooth. I, it went too smooth. I was really waiting for uh, somebody else to, you know, make a charge with saving their tires or something bad to happen to us. You know, it just was one of those days. It, it went so close to perfect. I guess it was about three thousandths of a second close to perfect because we did miss the pole by three thousandths of a second. <laughs> it gave me a good enough race car to get the lead right away. So. It all worked the plan. Oh, drive me well, I sort of went backwards on all this, but I really want to get. To, I wanted everybody to know how this team formed. Um, you know, four years ago when I got to know you, you were you were racing with the Riggs family, um, very good car, and then uh, you know you actually ended up you know switching from another to another team, and then went over to uh, uh, Eddie Harvey and them. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, um, I'll start even further. I, I came down with my own family car, the Rock Nams number seventy. And uh, we were fortunate enough to win the one race they had at Nashville, and that caught Jeff Riggs' eye. Um, he was the, the crew chief of Riggs Racing with his father, David Riggs, being the owner. And we put together a plan to go race in the next year, right off the bat. Uh, the chemistry was there. What, what a great family to work with. And uh, we, we had a few successful seasons together with sponsorship from Advanced Auto Parts. When wow. Advanced Auto Parts pulled out of motorsports, they went one more year, um, you know, giving it all they had, and you know, that was just kind of drive them out. It was a real small family-based team, and we just couldn't compete at the level we wanted to. 
Um, so we, I kind of looked out, I, I landed a three race deal with Brian Fischel and Fischel Motorsports. After that three races, uh, things weren't looking that good. So again, I found myself on the sidelines with nothing but a helmet in my hand. And Eddie Harvey called me up and said he was looking to make a change with his driver. And um, so we, we, we paired up and we did the same thing. We'll do three races together. And uh, if it's good, we'll keep going. Um, I brought my guys from Riggs Racing because the Ideal Racing was forming a two-car team and was low on help. Mm -hmm. Reggie Newman, David Riggs, uh, Justin Wells, Danny Williams, that they came over with me and really became, you know, a really uh, backbone of that team. And we went for three races right off the gate. We finished third at Carraway. Um, we got knocked around at Bowman Gray. And then we went right out and we, we won at Carraway in our third race. So obviously, you know, life is good. We're going to stay together. We won three more races that year. Um, 2012 was a little bit more trying for us. Only hit victory lane one time after destroying our primary race car, really struggling with the setup. And then 2013, some more bad luck with ideal racing in, in the engine department. And then finally, like you said, when the monkey got off our back, all of a sudden we showed what we really had, and we were continuing to show how good this team is, you know, this spring. Well, we know Langley's been a, a good track for you. You hold the track record there that you broke in 2013. Uh, looking forward to coming back down uh, with the Southern Modifieds this weekend and uh, taking some more uh, laps around the track. Absolutely. That, that's a track I just loved the second I got there. Really reminded me of Star Speedway, which is a home track of mine in Epping, New Hampshire. Just really round, not a whole lot of banking, and it's a momentum place. And there's, you know, you can use the outside in multiple grooves and um, you know, just a track that I like right away, uh, happy with my success there, but also some unfinished business after last year's bad luck. So, always looking forward to go to Langley. Um, unbelievable fan base there. Love the way that the track operates. Beautiful facility. They get the fans involved. And the whole day is just always a pleasure. Well, a lot of people don't understand... Um a lot of times we look at drivers and we see the drivers in uh, other series and they, they go between Nationwide, Cup, and everything else. You've also got other experience besides the open wheel modifieds. Yeah, you know, I've always tried to keep a, a broad resume uh, in my racing. And uh, I moved down to North Carolina about a year and a half ago with two goals. You know, be closer to my race team and also to try and expand racing back in New England. Uh, I enjoyed some late models, but mostly open wheel stuff, small box super modified, dirt sprint cars and modified. And uh, when I got down here, Jim Rosenblum racing and, and Raymox race engines along with Brian Goza gave me a couple opportunities. I've tested uh, ARCA cars and trucks. I attempted to qualify a truck at Rockingham last year. Not with the best results, but you know, not, not from lack of effort from all those guys. And it's, uh, it's pretty neat. You know, I say all the time, you know, it's a saying or a cliche, but I'm living the dream, but I, I really am, and uh, pretty fortunate to be doing so. Well, you, you tested an ARCA car, I believe, uh, back at Daytona this year, wasn't it? Yeah, we, uh, Brian Dozo was nice enough, and, and along with Ray Mock and the Ray Hilly, were nice enough to put the car under me to go testing. Um, it was Brian Dozo's race car. We split the testing duties that day, and... Um, you know, I watched Daytona on TV, and then one day I, I got to walk in the infield, and I never thought I'd even be able to see, you know, the, the great where the great American race is, the Daytona 500, let alone turn some laps there. And uh, that that was for sure a dream come true. It's going to be a great feeling. Uh, you, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. You know, as a kid and uh, as a fan coming up, you know, looking at Daytona, you always look at Daytona as the, as the big event, you know, the February and the, the July race. But once you get to step down there and be able to look up and see everything, it's it's totally awesome. And like Andy just expressed, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling that you you'll just, never yeah, you'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and, and like you said, it's, uh, it's in, this past December when I got to walk through that tunnel with my helmet bag in hand, it was just surreal. It was, I'm going to be out there. And, uh, you know, we couldn't put together anything for the race, but uh, that's not to say that nothing will happen in the future. I got that experience under my belt and yeah. always trying to take the next step and get in a race there. 
I was looking over uh, social media today uh, before coming down here, and uh, I looked at Facebook, and I think I saw an announcement about uh, some things that maybe happened with the team during the break. Your team? Yeah, yeah, we're looking to just uh, keep the momentum going, you know, stay sharp. And Eddie Hardy, is, uh, you know, being from New Jersey, working with Jamie Tomato all those years, as well as myself, we're looking forward to taking some trips up north. Um, you know, he's talking about Stafford Motor Speedway, Connecticut, which is Eddie's favorite track, and uh, Loudon, New Hampshire, which being a kid from New Hampshire is, again, a, a Daytona for me. That, that's just, that place is incredible. I still get the same chills when I walk through the tunnel there. Right. Uh, last year, coming so close, finishing fourth, my first time there with Ideal Racing, it really showed uh, the caliber of equipment, you know, that Eddie Harvey puts under me and also the strength of this team. And we're looking to just improve ourselves by just three positions next time we go. Well, you know, uh, I've worked with you for five years, uh, Andy, and it's been great. And it's uh, one thing that me and you always uh, talk about and we don't totally agree on is the safety factor of uh, the, these cars and uh, the equipment that, you know, that y'all have to run with the Hans device and everything else. And uh, I remember probably back in 2012, uh, we were talking about the Hans device, and uh, I remember the incident that you were in at Caraway, the first or second race of the year, and uh, you jumping out, the first thing, you know, trying to get to you, make sure you're okay, and you were like, you know, that Hans does its job. What, what can you say about the safety uh, equipment that NASCAR is um, making drivers have these days? Well, you know, it's amazing, and you can take it for granted. When, when the bulletins come out in November, you, you look at the price you have to pay in certain equipment, and at your first reaction is to get upset. But Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's understandable. Yeah. Anybody get hurt. Now, I don't care if it costs every team in the garage a million dollars. If it saves somebody's life, it was worth it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I, I've been in two incidents in particular where I had the imprint where the Hans device is on the front of my chest. You know the helmet was really pulled forward and the leverage of the Hans to have bruises on my chest. And uh, oh, wow. not only that, but you know, the standard of the seat, I use LaJoy seat. Um, I'm no, like very I'm thankful right. I had one that day on that wreck. And uh, the difference when you go, like I said, I, I've been in supermodel cars, I've been in sprint cars. When they take one of those cars and they just set it on the table, and that is how you work on it, just on a table. Right. They're so light and so few bars that when I strap in that modified, I do feel safer. There is a there is a part to it that's 100% on NASCAR deal. Like I said, they make sure we're all in there safe. And if it saves one person's life, it doesn't matter how much it costs, it was worth it. Definitely, definitely. Well, we definitely want to make sure that you uh, give a plug to all your sponsors and everything. I know you got a family business uh, that you, you carry on the car and definitely want to bring all that uh, out and let all the fans know uh, who sponsors you. Yeah, you know, like I said, this is the Eddie Harvey uh, prepared team, and I couldn't do it without the Harvey family. And, you know, everybody that makes it happen, Phoenix Trio Motors, Ideal Finance, um, First Choice Auto, Rock and Hand Boat, also just, you know, all the product sponsors behind us, Raymond Course Power, Pro Shocks, Racing Electronics Radio, Pro Systems Brake, it, and just, um, you know, all the fans for coming out, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Langley Speedway for stepping up and getting us two dates this year, and of course, NASCAR, like I said, not only uh, <laughs> keeping us safe, but putting the races on, and of course, Wheel and Engineering for keeping the series alive. Definitely. Well, uh, I was down at the track today. I'm gonna tell you what—they're out there painting walls. They're painting, uh, you know, the start-finish line. Things are looking good. Um, I know that the fans, with the ones I've talked to during the week of being back home, are just looking forward to uh, a good race coming out. And uh, I know y'all guys will put on a good show. And mm -hmm. I know everybody's really looking forward to it. Yeah, you know, I have no doubt. Langley Speedway, like I said, first-class facility. Always looking forward to it, as well as just the fans that are out in that part of Virginia. Have uh, you had a chance to uh, make contact uh, with the little program that we were talking about with uh, racing in another division this week? 
No news yet. No news yet. Okay, well, we'll keep that silent, but we'll see how all that goes and how we can play it out. And, uh, definitely look forward to y'all guys coming down. Breaking looking forward news. to some great races. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done that before. Well, we've done that before. Now, Saturday's forecast is a high of 74, so it should be some good racing weather. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Saturday's supposed and to be the we'll best. We'll have to we'll have to come by and stop by and say hand, hi to you too, Andy. Glad to talk to you, and uh, thank you for having me on the show. Hey, thank yeah, you. We right. appreciate it. We'll see you uh, Friday uh, evening. Yes, sir. See you at the race. All right. Take care. Sorry, guys. I felt like I hogged it all up. No, you <laughs> told it's, your, it's your quiz. I mean, you know the guys. <laughs> you know the most. You know that you you know more things to ask and what to ask specifically. So if you're able to do that, I'll pierce right. number two. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, 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 oh. out. Uh, yeah, well, at least you've done some better over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what Alan, Alan would say sometimes when he gets going, all of a sudden he realizes it and says, What do y'all need to answer questions? I'm going to just keep on going if you don't. <laughs> yeah. It was like that the first time I ever had Al on the show with me when uh, I first started. Al, he, and Roger even told me, You probably won't have to talk. You'll only have to ask questions. And Al will answer them. Then he'll let the driver answer him. And then he'll keep on talking after the driver does that. Well, you know, it, Al's been around it. forever. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. 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 I tell you, I remember uh, being a, a six year old out at Langley Speedway and Al going all around. And I'm like, Who is that guy? You know, and then we'd all go out to eat. I think the place uh, was over there near Haas's Deli. I forget what it was called. Um, everybody would go out to eat after the race, and there's Al. And you know, he wasn't that much of a talker back then, but over the years, he yeah. had a lot it of developed. knowledge. Well, yeah. it all depends on where you catch him at. It all depends. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah if, he, if he's in the media center working, he won't talk to you at all. No, really. he, he's silent when he's in the yeah, media center. And has his headphones on. Yeah, and he's, he's in the zone. Yeah, I was going to say, he's in the Now, of course, there are the nap times he has to take. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've got pictures of him. He's got his feet kicked up, his headphones on, and he just kicked back. We have photographic evidence of this. Snoozing away. But you go anywhere and people know it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows it. It's that. like, man. And how, I called in a couple of weeks ago, and he was telling me about how many trips he's made to Daytona. Yeah. That was ungodly. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, it's time for you. I hope you're not driving the same car. <laughs> you know? yeah, right. no, he's got a new car, what, last year or year before? Yeah. Well, so, yeah, he got a new car. So now is Dennis calling us? I gave him the number. Okay. Oh, boy. Here we go. All right, well, what we'll do is since we're not going to talk about the air, there he is. Oh. I was going to talk about the great weather we were going to have. I know, it's going to be gorgeous. Okay, you do this. It's let's talk racing. Let's talk racing. Hey, Dennis, this is Richmond International Raceway. Hi. How you doing? How you doing, Dennis? How's everything going your way? I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah, well, you got Jack Dodson and Scott Allen, Brian Morehouse, Crystal Hur, Roger Brim. We got a whole pe a whole bunch of we people. We have a full house tonight. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a cast of characters. Yeah, you you <laughs> oh, got that right. You got that right. Yeah. Nailed that sucker right on the head. <laughs> well, I, today you were up in Washington D.C. with Kenza, so tell us all about that little experience. Ooh. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was a lot of fun uh, having Matt in uh, up in the D.C. area. Uh, went to a place called the News Museum, so it's, uh, it's all about the news and industry and journalism and everything. It's actually really cool. I've never been there before, but uh, had him up there to sign some autographs, meet fans, a bunch of media interviews. Uh, he and I did a little talk show type of setting and took some Q&A from the fans. I was, I was trying to... Uh, you know, have my inner uh, Jimmy Fallon come out. So I'm uh, <laughs> not sure how I did, but uh, it was a lot of fun and uh, great to be up there. Matt uh, is a great guy, and um, you know, I know he's uh, he really wants to, to get a win this year. It's uh, you know, it's funny you start talking to fans after he won seven times last year. That everyone's asking, you know, hey, when's Jimmy Johnson going to win? When's Matt Kenseth going to win? So I guess uh, winning breeds that. You got that right. Mm -hmm. Well. Tell us about what all is going on at Richmond for the race coming up, the big race coming in a couple weeks. What all you've got planned, what kind of special things you got going on, and, and give us a background on all that. Sure, thank you. I appreciate that. And the, the good thing is that the sun's out, or it's been out for a few days. We're having a rough winter, so uh, we're actually able to get outside and get some work done because uh, we need to. It, uh, I'm only 18 days away, so it's going to be pretty wild. But um, a lot going on here. You know, excuse me. One of the big things is, um, you know, Friday night, uh, double header night now. NASCAR Nationwide Series, Toyota Care 250 at seven, followed by the K and N Series race. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool for fans to be able to come out and see a double header race. But all day Friday.
that, it's nonstop action on the track with cup practice, K&N practice, and then qualifying for K&N nationwide cup that all leads into the, to the two races. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then Saturday, obviously, is the Sprint Cup Series Toyota Owners 400, and that starts at 7. And, but, you know, uh, you know, it's all-day activity here at the track. And one of the really cool new things that we have going is from 2 o'clock to 4.30, um, uh, the fans can come out and, and take over the track, and that's what we're calling it, track takeover. Walk the track, sign the start-finish line. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a band out there. We're going to have driver Q&As with Kyle Busch and, and Ryan Newman oh, and nice. uh, Parker Clearman, Cole Witt. Uh, they're gonna be, fans are going to be able to really get up close and personal uh, with with the sport. I think that's a lot of, that's going to be really cool for them. Something different. We're putting a lot of stress on our operations department because it's open to anybody that has a ticket. It's not an upcharge. It's not another, you know, pit pass experience or whatever. This is just included in your ticket. And we're happy to bring that to the fans. That's awesome. Well, now, at Richmond, what a lot of tracks that I've been paying attention to, the, 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 the attendance is down somewhat. But the last couple of times I've been in Richmond, it, it, it seemed like it was it was pretty good crowds that you had. How are things looking for this year? Yeah, you know, last September we were up year over year in ticket sales, and right now for April we're trending right at about the same uh, number of tickets as we were a year ago. But, you know, I, I'm very hopeful that we can exceed last year's attendance for the April race. I, I really want to do that. Uh, our staff wants to do it. We're pushing hard because, you know, I think – We've all seen the decline in ticket sales the last couple of years. So if you start to see that, hey, you know, two races, three races, the ticket trend is starting to go up again, I think that's great. It's, it's great for all of us in the industry. It's great for all of us as race fans to see people um, coming back to the racetrack. So um, I'm holding out hope that we can uh, surpass last year. We're, we're preparing for that anyways. And, you guys know too. It's, it's been a rough year with uh, with the weather. Um, mm-hmm. The air tight and seems to be getting a, a lot more air time than the than the cars going around the track, unfortunately. But I give NASCAR a lot of credit because outside of Texas this past weekend, where you just couldn't do anything about the amount of rain that they got. You got that right. The Titans mm-hmm. performed, and it's really helped our race fans and and everyone be able to get the race in at least on the on the same day again, aside from this past weekend. So you know. I, all that stuff factors into um, to our attendance, and uh, but you know, for us, we've been doing racing here for over sixty years. We got a great fan base, very loyal fan base. Now, you you got uh, a lot of stuff going on with the three series racing there um, during the weekend. What's the schedule look like? I know some of the teams, some in the Cup guys have to be there on Thursday for Tech. What is the schedule like? Yeah, um, we're actually start moving uh, a couple of the series in Wednesday night so that they're ready to go on Thursday. We, we are on track Thursday. We're not open to the public on Thursday. It's really a condensed schedule on Thursday. Nationwide's going to actually knock out all of their practice on Thursday, and k and going to do one practice session on Thursday. So I think that helps us uh, get everything ready to go for Friday. And um, so we'll have all that done. And then, again, we'll hit that schedule, like I said, on Friday with a pretty lengthy cup practice on Friday, actually, um, which I think being able to have some of the practice done on Thursday allows NASCAR to kind of lengthen the, the cup schedule a little bit. And then uh, I think the qualifying, too, with the new NASCAR format is going to be a lot of fun here on our short track. I watched it live at Martinsville, and it's really really interesting to see it live. Um, yeah, I was there. I saw it. <laughs> All of us were. You get a much better understanding of what's going on with the cars going out and how drivers are kind of picking their spots to get out on the track. So I think for when our fans see it live, they'll have a much better appreciation for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Dennis. Um, I noticed in your background that you've come from, from uh, baseball. We talked a little bit when you got you involved with the Zims Foundation. And and as it you come from some base uh, football background also, what kind of things could you did you bring from those series to, to NASCAR to help with the Richmond International? Yeah, I appreciate that. It's actually it, it, it was an interesting transition because I actually get that question a lot because um, I didn't grow up around uh, motorsports like a lot of people who are in the industry. So I, you know, I guess I, I was at that 
at that time an outsider. Now I've been in it for about 13 years. So um, I think I think a couple of things. I think primarily I mean, worked it for the Rams in Southern California and the Angels and the Mighty Ducks. That the big event um, involved in a lot of big events. And so I think that having that experience helped me when I came to the racetrack because these are massive events. I've worked the Super Bowl. I've worked a couple Final Fours. Mm -hmm. So I love the big event atmosphere. I love staging big events. NASCAR does it 36 times a year. Now we get to do it twice here at Richmond. We did it twice when I was in Michigan. And for a long time when I was in California, uh, when I first started there, we had one race, and then we went to two, and then back to one. So um, being able to stage big events, I think the other part of it, too, is having worked in the L.A. market, um, you know, used to a, a, a market that's very competitive mm -hmm. uh, to get the sports fans' attention. Mm -hmm. You have to be very creative to, to be able to market your product in a cluttered sports environment like L.A. Mm -hmm. Helps me when I was in Michigan and, and, and helping us. I, hopefully it's helping us <laughs> here in Richmond. No, I think you've done a great job out there. I know the campground has changed. It's gotten a lot nicer. It's a lot more roomy. Um, and I, I think it's a neat thing that Toyota comes in. And Toyota, if you drive a Toyota, you come to the event and you have your own parking spot out there. I mean, that's, that's pretty neat. Is that something you guys came up with? Or is that Toyota's deal? And you get some free food. They have a little thing outside of the racetrack wow. that you can, they'll feed you and give you a drink. Is he borrowing somebody's Toyota? I don't know. Because he, <laughs> he's, yeah, yeah, he's got the keys. I don't know your Toyota key and did you get into those two things. And um, that, that is a Toyota initiative. Um, our job when they brought that to us was just to make it work and find the, the area for the Toyota owner's parking and obviously their, their hospitality area. But uh, it's a great idea on, on their side. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why it's named what it is, the Toyota Owner's 400. They want this to, to be about the people that, you know, for them, that, that purchased the, the Toyota vehicles. And, and we all know it. not everybody on the property is a Toyota fan. We have the, the Chevy guys and the Ford mm -hmm. fans and, and all that. And we get all that. And, and Toyota gets it too. They, they love the competition. Um, they're in the sport for the competition. And um, it, it's so much fun. And I think the other part of it too is um, I give them credit too because, you know, Chevy's still here with the display. Ford's still here with the display. And it, it, it Ultimately, the sport has been based on um, manufacturers and, and what they do and, and how they go about their business and how they rely on NASCAR to, to sell automobiles and introduce all of our fans to all their great products. So uh, we, we enjoy having them all here, but Toyota's been a great partner, and they're going to be a great partner for a long time. To the, to the track itself, as far as the structure and everything, do you have any new stuff going on, any building anything new and getting anything started with that? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is um, we made some changes to uh, the backstretch turn three area grandstands. We actually took some down. Um, you probably noticed that some of our racetracks have been doing that, and, yeah. and we did it as well. Um, and now what we're going to do is reprogram that area. So we'll be announcing it soon, uh, what's going back in there. But um, part of that area will be a fan area. And it's going to be a cool destination for the fans. So what I really like about Richmond compared to where I've been the last, my last two um, um, racetracks, they were both two mile oval, big two mile oval. And they came here to a three quarter mile track and what's really cool is during the race, fans get out of their seat and they walk a lot on the outside of the fence. Yeah. You can, it's only three quarters of a mile. So now we've created a destination for them out there in turn three. That's I think they're really gonna like it. That's really neat. That's well, to be able to talk about uh, some of the events going on, uh, what, what kind of drivers are y'all going to be having out there? Is there some kind of hospitality events going on? And what's the band that y'all are going to have? Have y'all announced that? Um, no, no, like, big name act, like, uh, like Chevy used to bring here with the Chevy Rock and Roll 400. I mean, so many people still remember those days of the Chevy Rock and Roll 400. I mean, had Kiss played here, you know. Um, it's a local band, and I don't I, so apologize because I can't remember their name, but um, but it's working with a local radio station and bringing the band in, so they must be pretty good. But you know, I think the track takeover is something for fans to go on our website and learn more about, or follow us on Facebook. Um, I think you know, again, the turn three area is going to be something new and different. So I, 
and, I, and the driver part of it, you know, I mentioned Ryan Newman, Kyle Busch for a Q&A down on track takeover, literally down on the track. I think it's going to be something for, for everyone to see. Yeah. Good. That's now, I understand you've got a lot of stuff going on. You've got a four-pack product uh, or thing you're pushing, and you've also got you've got an inaugural golf tournament y'all got going on too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, the first one is uh, the four pack of tickets is with Papa John's, another great partner, and um, it's four tickets, uh, four pizzas uh, here at the track. So you you get a good seat and you get fed. So that's that's always a plus. And then the other one is the golf tournament. We've actually partnered up with the uh, the Richmond Flying Squirrels, the Double A baseball team, and uh, we both do a lot of charity work here in the region. And uh, so we partnered up to do a turn left golf classic. Obviously, when you think racing, at least on ovals, you think about turning left, and mm -hmm. you have to think about it for a second as it relates to baseball. They're like turn left in baseball. Well. What do you do when you get the first and you're heading the second? You gotta turn left. Right? <laughs> so you turn left at first, turn left at second, third, and head for home. So we've partnered up on this charity golf tournament. It'll be June second at the Dominion Club, and sales are going well for that. And uh, our goal is just to to raise a lot of money for a number of deserving charities here in the in the greater Richmond area. Well, the, the the Richmond track has always been to me the high one of the highlights of the series because you get the short track, but you get you get a lot of that speedway speed out there, and it's a lot of entertainment. A lot of guys getting into it, banging on each other, and I loved it out there. Oh yeah. Well, we we appreciate it. I I, I loved it as well, and and the exact description that you just gave is is what I hear so much um, from fans and from the drivers and actually Kent said, said it today he's like you know it, it's a three quarter mile it's the only one that we race on but you know it races like a mile and a half believe it or not so and I think that just goes back to the whole speed and how fast they get up the speed like coming out of four and then having to slam on the brakes hard and turn one and our fans that sit out in that area they always love that because then those oh, yeah. rotors start glowing well, I tell you, you got a you got a great first rate facility out there, and we're really glad that it's it's nearby us that we can go and enjoy the racing there. Well, we we appreciate it, and like I said, we're looking forward to uh, getting a lot of fans out here and just uh, always trying to tweak on the facility and make it better for them. All right, well, we look forward to seeing you. All right, guys, well, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, and uh, have a great night. Thank you. All right, thanks for your call in. Alright guys, I'm off to Darlington. I gotta go uh, go down there and do some work. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, but we'll have to get with you later, see if we can get, get cleared to come into the track this next couple of weeks. Alright guys, take care. Alright. See ya. Bye. Yeah, we actually Greg Edwards. Time on that too. Huh? This is actually the next one. Greg on. Who? Greg Edwards. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, <laughs> <laughs> you leave the thing. Okay. I'm right here. Hello? Hey Greg. Hey. How are you, How doing, you doing this evening? I'm very good. How about you? We're good. We have a full house here tonight, and we just got one more if he's too shy to come on in. <laughs> Mason's, never been, Mason's never been shy, trust me. Uh, I'm still at the race shop working on his car. <laughs> <laughs> well, we I don't know who this guy is, but he says he's working on your car. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of scary to That's stand there looking at him. I think he's running away. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and even worse than that, Greg, is the fact that he knows Scott, who's in here, <laughs> and he's supposed to be in a mechanic. So Now we're double worried. Now, yeah. now we're, so how's your season going so far? I know you got the win last week. Yeah, everything's going good. Uh, you know, we, we picked up a W for the first uh, time for the uh, Opening night in a while. It's, uh, our opening nights have been pretty terrible here lately, but uh, you know it's always good getting the season started off with a win. So, are you going to be running basically the whole year at, at Langley? Are you going to be doing any going out to travel around to other tracks or anything like that? Yeah, we'll be uh, mainly at Langley with our, our the ninety seven point three car, but I'll be driving for Randy Sears at uh, like the Denny Hamlin Short Track Showdown. And uh, we'll be driving for him at a select of races South Boston, Kenley, Myrtle Beach, and uh, possibly Martinsville. So, yeah, we'll be we'll be doing a little bit of traveling. Good. good deal. So, Greg, James is your car owner, and and how involved is he in with the race car? I know he's been around for a long time, and he's put a lot of his own money in the sport. 
And how's he doing? I know he was in a car wreck last year or year before last. Yeah. Yep, he was in an accident. Actually, it wasn't a car wreck. It was, uh, he was on his tractor and his, uh, oh, really? had some trees and, and had a tree come back and flip off the bucket and pretty much crushed him in the seat. And, uh, oh, you know, he's really God. lucky to be alive, so we thank God for that. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's great. I mean, he just kind of lets me do what I need to do. I mean, he's just, uh, you know, we, we keep the, his cars at our shop and pretty much he pays the bill for them. So it's, uh, you know, he has turned into a great friendship with us, too. And, uh, I just hope I'm keeping him happy. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. He's yeah. been around for a while. Yeah. Getting back to uh, uh, the Denny Hamlin showdown, uh, you've shown before, I mean, you can hang with the best of them. I remember a uh, year before last at Richmond, uh, you were giving Tony Stewart one heck of a run for his money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And speaking to Tony in uh, Victory Lane, he was like, that kid's pretty good. And I looked over at Tony, and I was like, that kid's our age, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess we're so used to kids nowadays, 19, 20 years old. And he was like, well, he raced me real clean. Mm -hmm. you know. So I know he appreciated that. But getting uh, back to that, it's no longer going to be at Richmond. Um, as, as we know, Denny Hamlin's moved it to uh, South Boston. And, uh, what do you think of that? I mean, because you, you've done pretty good in years past at Sobo. Yeah, I mean, I, I like South Boston, but we've won there before. And, you know, I don't know. I guess I'm on the fence there. Cause I really like Richmond because I thought it was you know, a track I don't get to run that often. I really love that racetrack. I right. Mean, you talk to any short track driver, and that's like, I mean, that is just perfect. I mean, it's such good racing there. And I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed South Boston. And I, honestly, I think. This may play in a little bit more favor for the short track drivers and the, and the late model regulars mm -hmm. than, say, Richmond did because, you know, Richmond's a track these cup guys got a million laps on and they're, they're really good about moving their groove around. And, like, when I was following Tony in that race, I learned a lot after he passed me and, and just moving my groove around that he was really comfortable with. So I think when they come to South Boston, you know, the guys that race there week in and week out or have a lot of laps on that track, they're going to be, there's going to be no, you know, they're not just much advantage of these tough guys. So, uh, and maybe more because they, they run there so much. So it, it may bring a, a little more of the, the, the late model drivers up to the top. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But I mean, I feel comfortable either way. I mean, I love South Boston too. It's a great track. I just kind of like Richmond because it feel like you were on a, a big stage and, uh, it was a short track for them, and it was kind of a big track for us, so I, I kind of like it. We're well, getting back to the 2014 season. It sounds like the competition, from what I'm hearing, is going to be tough out at Langley. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I heard, um, and I'm not up to date on this, but I don't think C.E. Falk is running full-time out there this year? Mm -hmm. No, I, from what I can tell, he's not. I mean, he's. Uh, I think he's, he's going to work for his uncle's team, uh, and he's in the Charlotte area, so maybe it's easier for them just to go to South Boston. I know he's been running South Boston just a little, little close to them now. But, uh, you know, it's no shortage of competition up there now with uh, Nate Smith and uh, Matt Walt and my brother Danny and Mark Works and Casey Wyatt. I mean, there, there's just a, there's plenty of cars that can uh, fill that gap. Yeah, I talked to some uh, people last weekend, and after having the race out at Langley, they were like, the, the competition was awesome. They said that that race was just such a great race. So uh, I'm glad to see you got off to a great start, and uh, hopefully 2014 will be your year, Greg. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we just take them one race at a time, you know. Uh, you can't win them all unless you win the first one. So uh, we won the first one, and, you know, every week we go out there, we're trying to win again. And that's really hard to do with the competition, but uh, that's what we go for. So who do you feel like is going to be your biggest competition this year over there? Who's kind of stepped their game up? Well, I mean... You know, Nick Smith, as he showed last year, he, he's very talented. He's always, anybody that's ever watched him drive knows that. Mm -hmm. He's got a very good equipment behind him. I, I know Nick Smith's going to be there. Matt Waltz is a guy that's putting a lot of effort in their team, and Matt's one heck of a driver, and he, he's going to be really tough. But like I said, at the end of last year, Casey Wyatt has stepped his game up. I think he's going to be a big player, and uh, I think Mark works. I think, you know, there's there's quite a few drivers to step up, and, you know, like I said, Langley, Langley's hard to say, man. There's, there's a lot of great cars. Yeah, it just seems like, you know, the last couple of years there's been you or CE. Right? And it's pretty much dominated the series, but it seems like there's some, you know, like you said, Nick Smith's kind of come back, some kind of new blood. Matt Wirtz. Uh, Matt Watson, Mark Wirtz, and, uh, you know, 
a lot of competition. I mean, you've got six, seven, eight drivers there that could possibly, you know, mm -hmm. be going for the checkered every weekend. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Which makes for great reason. competition. Great oh, competition yeah. out there. Nice and you know, the good thing I've seen, I was at Southern National last year for the big race down here. The Langley guys seem to always have good show, good showings at other tracks when they go there to, to race. Yeah, I mean, we, we've had good luck when we've traveled out of town. I mean, it's, uh, you know, sometimes I think running on Langley is so flat and so hard to get a hold of that it, uh, it doesn't make it very good for people to come out of town to race at Langley and keep up. Now, I'll say that, and the last two hands in heat, people from out of town have won them. So that just shows you how good a driver is. If you like Peyton Sellers will roll in here, you know, and, and, and they've got great equipment and great cars and great drivers. Timothy so Peters? That, that, mm -hmm. Yeah, playing field keeping it up. But I always feel like when you get off a flat track and go to a bank track, I mean, to me, it feels like, oh, this is easy. Because <laughs> you've got banking on the car up, you know. You're on this flat, slick, you know, three miles. And you, you really have to be, you know, careful on the throttle, careful on the braking. And I think when I get to a bank track, or a lot of guys from that have grown up on playing, when I get to a bank track, it, it, it always feels, you know, very forgiving as a driver. Now, like I said, you got to go up against competition, like you know, Lee Pulliam and Keith McCaffrey when you get tracks like that, and, and they're no joke. So, if you can win with those guys, you really got to feel like you did something. But at least you won't have to worry about Lee Pulliam too much this year. I think he's he, with him being in the K and N series. You won't see a lot of him, he, but he's still running. I think he won the race in South Boston yeah, last week. Down South really? Boston, uh, I think they had 27, 28 cars. And they had a, uh, you know, twins. Um, that was a really good race down there this weekend. Um, he's he's a pretty good driver too. I mean, yeah. And I, I think going to K and N, I think he's going to do pretty good up there. Oh yeah, that that, that Lee is a phenomenal driver. Yeah, he's become two-time national champion without being you know, excellent. He's a uh, he's pretty much he's taking over Philip Morris's role model as uh, as a late model driver. So yeah, he's a superstar in this sport for sure. And uh, Whenever I get to race against him, and, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure. I mean, he's, a, he's a great guy, and he's, uh, he's super fast. So if you can beat him, you got to, uh, you know, you got to take that as something. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about a little bit your history, uh, your bio, basically, about your years in racing. I mean, it goes all the way back to the 90s, uh, you know, from grand stock on up. Give us a little bit of insight on when you got started, how you got started and uh, your progress along the way? Well, I mean, I got started, we were racing, uh, me and my brother started racing motocross. And we were doing that for a while when I was yeah, really young. And he, he got a car to drive from a uh, guy down the street, like a, I think it was All-American at the time. And he started racing Saturday nights. And we were still traveling around doing the motocross deal. And uh, I think the family kind of got tired of being a Saturday night and taking me somewhere else to race motocross, you know, motorcycle. And, kind of pushed me to get in the go-kart and you know we kind of jumped in that and we were real successful in the go-karts and uh i got a grand stock at the time when i was 16 and back then the grand stock position was just unbelievable with the town it was in the sale lemons and you know mitch starbers and a huge amount of you know, talented people and we got in there and we were pretty successful for a couple of years and then we uh we were lucky enough to get someone of any handy down handy down uh, late models and got in that, and we won at least one race the first season, and uh, it's been on since then. Good. Yes. And you, you've raced for your, your family, and then, of course, now racing for James Long. Have you raced for anyone else during that time? Uh, even ran, I think you ran for Randy Sears for uh, all the special events, didn't you? Yeah, we've, uh, we've raced for a lot of people. Really? <laughs> we've raced for a lot of people. I mean, Ted Days is one that stands out. I raced the, the number 84 Ford for him for a while. I was lucky enough to get him his first win, his first one. We won several races with him. And, uh, you know, we've we raced for several people, you know, in and out, not full time. Just people would, you know, ask me to come drive their car. And, you know, it's just been an honor. I, I guess about, about seven years ago, I just decided, look, I'm not going to own these things anymore. They're just getting too expensive. And as long as people let me drive their cars, that's what I'm going to do. Good deal. Awesome. Good plan. So, when you when you look at how many wins you've gotten over the years in, in late model and everything, 
what are some of the highlights to you as far as your career has been in, in, high, in, in the late models? And are you looking maybe to someday move up into, you know, move up into the K&N or the uh, trucks or something just, you know, to give it a shot? Well, I've already done that. I mean, we ran a, a nationwide. Danny was yes. running some nationwide. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. I this car one time. Then we were racing at ASA. I drove for a, a driver, Scott LeFaber, out of Minnesota, <coughs> and they had uh, two other drivers. It was Mike Garvey and Kevin Swinsky. They were pretty much dominant with Gary. And I drove uh, several races for those guys. And then we got our own team going, and we ran for a while and sat on some poles. And uh, me and Danny were sharing the ride. And uh, we had top five finishes. And then we ran up front on a very limited budget with teams that had a lot of money. But honestly, now, no, I'm happy racing late models. I mean, the, the fact that moving up, this is a young guy's sport anymore. I mean, it's, uh, these kids are 18 years old moving to this, and I understand that. So, you know, I enjoy the sport. I enjoy late model stock car racing. And um, that's pretty much what I'm here to do, is, is, is to win races on late model stock cars and have fun and put on a good show for fans. Now, since you have such a big profile, uh, in your whole time that you've been racing, what's a real embarrassing moment that you've had? I know everybody has one, and I usually ask this question, and well, you're the lucky winner that gets asked tonight, so. <laughs> well, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Is there too many, or? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I was trying to think. Like when, winning at Kenley a couple of years ago was, was a really surprise. We went in there and we were the worst car on the racetrack the day before. I mean, actually terrible. And we rebuilt that car the day before the race and just oh, turned around and next thing you know, we were one of the best cars and ended up winning the race. But a lot of little things like that, you know, winning at Myrtle Beach, um, you know, it's hard to say, but I got to say the best moment that I've had personally was getting the Ted Days, which he passed away, he's one of the best car owners I've ever had, he's a very nice guy, but getting him his first win to South Boston was a big deal for him, and it was, you know, I just, I just thought it was really neat, and uh, that'll go down, what I remember the most. So who back in the day, uh, I used to help Barry Strathman back in the day, that's, that's reaching back in the 90s. Who back in the day was like one of the toughest guys to race against? I mean, I, I used to love it back then, because you had... Bubba Adams, Roger Sawyer, Elton, some. Who was your? Who was the hardest guy to race with back then? Mm, I think Chip Hudson was probably one of the toughest. Really? Uh, yeah, Chip was. Chip was. And I mean, Bubba was. It's hard, it's hard to race with. But gave me a slack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bubba Adams, is Bubba Adams. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> for some reason, me and Bubba had a really good relationship, and it was. Nicer, he was nicer with me than he was with most, I guess. That's what I can say. Yeah. I don't know. Chip was really tough. I know. Uh, man, we had so many good races back then. Uh, Mike Buckin, my gosh. Oh yeah. Class act and a, a very good racer. So I don't know. There's too many to even talk about. There's just been so many that have come through Langley that have been uh, at one time Buck Harefield. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Him. And he was quite a character. I used to, and, man, and, just hanging around Dozer. Bugs was even funny. Oh, Buddy God, Dozer. Buddy Dozer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of stories to go along with Bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that one. I know we had, uh, uh, what was Chip's crew chief, uh, Pete, uh, not Pete, what's his name? This in the Nationwide and Truck Series. Now, we had him on a couple weeks ago, and I said, you know, Chip was the only guy that could run 200 laps, take his helmet off, and his hair would still be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he didn't have that perfect hair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he never had a hair out of place. It's so funny. That's fun. yeah. But those were the days. We used to have a lot of fun back then. All right, Greg, how about thanking your sponsors and, and, and anybody else you want to thank? And, and He probably wants to thank his crew member here, Mason. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Remember, he's supposed to be working on the car and he isn't he there. He better than tell me anything. I, I, I did my work tonight. Yeah, he did his work tonight, he said. <laughs> what do you let him do on the car is what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Hey, well, I got to thank uh, 97.3 The Eagle for coming back with us again, for sure. Uh, Amy Glass is going to be the primary sponsor to 97.3 The Eagle. And 
I gotta think all the guys. Mason, Phil, John, I mean, all of them. You still gonna think Mason? <laughs> Just because he's here, you have to mention it. <laughs> he's gonna be nice to that. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like this team is really gelled. I feel like, you know, the guys have gotten really comfortable with everything that I want to be done on the car or, or how I want things done. And, um, I just think it's a good environment, and I've always, I told them, like last year we were going through some pains, just like, just stuff going wrong with the car, just stuff that's not out of our doing, but, you know, attitudes got down, and, and not just the racing is attitude. Yeah. If you, all the team shows me a good attitude and puts me in the right frame of mind when I get in the car, I'll give you 100%. And that's what it's about. It's about team attitude, I think. And uh, everybody trying to work together. Nobody pointing fingers. It is what it is. We're doing the best we can. And if we can do that, I think we're going to have a very successful season. All right, Greg. Well, we appreciate your time tonight. We're going to send Mason back to the shop so he can go and get to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. All right, man. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. Yes. All right, you need to go back to work now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's, what's your job? Yeah, because I skimmed at the racetrack. He ain't ever doing anything. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. Call, Call, out. Call out. I don't know. I did see him work one time. What was, 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 was it? Was it bumping off the fenders? It was, it was in the spotter stand, and we had, <laughs> we had to send security up there, but yeah. everything was okay. So <laughs> don't <laughs> <there. It's laughs> bump 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 I think he's regretting coming here now. <laughs> Uh, Mason does work. I've just never seen it. <laughs> I've heard How many it. witnesses huh? do we have? Rumor, is that a rumor has it type thing? Mm. He says he works during the day. But it's a tough crowd. Four nights a week. We still got one more. We got one more? We got one more? Yeah, Casey's yeah, Casey calls. Casey. Oh, Casey. Go away. Gotcha. Well. Hey, Casey. You All right, stand by. I'm shifting over to the main line. Okay, you take care. Casey Roderick, how you doing? Doing good. How about you? I'm doing good. This is this is Jack. How's everything went in your neck of the woods? Oh, uh, it's all right. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's been going for you. Uh, about the same as as normal. Uh, got I got uh, Scott Allen and Crystal Hur hey. and Brian Morehouse <laughs> and Roger Brand. We got a whole a whole slew we, of people in we here. Have a full house. It's nice to have you back on the show again. By the way. What's that now? It's nice to have you back on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's uh, pretty cool to get back on here. It's been a while. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you something, man. I said I've been trying to get a hold of you for a long time. Oh, Where you been hiding? <laughs> I uh, I've been all over the place, man. We've uh, we haven't done much racing the last couple of years, and uh, um, I went up to uh, Michigan for a little while, and. Um, now I'm back home now, but uh, I've been I've been all over the place. <laughs> now I, I saw on social media I saw where you were on vacation not too long ago. Mm -hmm. It must be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was nice to be able to take about a week off there and uh, you know get away from everything. You know, Saint Petersburg, uh, Florida. So nice. he lives right on the ocean. So that's pretty cool to, to be out there for a while. Now, for people who don't know, give us a little background on Casey Roderick. I mean, I know a little bit about you, probably more than some do, but um, and probably more than some people really want to know about. Her, you know, after that trip to Daytona, I know about. Well, <laughs> I started racing when I was five years old, and uh, I really uh, started racing when I was in Uh, 
feature events and uh, include some some ARCA races. So, um, you know, I've been able to accomplish a lot with with very little, and, and very proud of that. So, um, but uh, things things got tough once I started moving up. Um, you know, I ran a few nationwide races a couple of years ago, and sponsorships just so tough nowadays to come by. And it's always been tough, but it's extremely tough now. Um, yeah, that's just one thing that's not on my side right now is the funding to to be able to run, you know, some more nationwide races or even, you know, the Tampa World Trucks. Um, and I think, you know, where my career started turning was, you know, once I started doing a little bit of that um, type racing, because um, I was only racing, you know, once a month or, you know, a couple times a month, something like that, you know, and, and I'm used to racing, you know, close to 50 races a year when I was running a legend car. So going from that to a handful a year was a big change. And, and um, you know, it's just been a, a, a tough couple of years for me. And, and I'm starting to get back going now. Uh, thank, you know, thanks to the Grams uh, down here in Marshall, where I'm from in Georgia. Um, I've always heard of the Grams. They've been uh, short track racing for a number of years. Um, so could have come back and did some super late model racing with them. Now you you did you're doing super late models. You won the rattler not too long ago too, right? Yeah, two weeks ago, uh, we we were able to uh, bring home the the rattler 250 trophy, and, and uh, that's been a big talk here the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, because I've been off the map for a while. You know, knowing uh, no one was throwing my name around much, and uh, I was. I was trying to find you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I tell you, man, a lot of a lot of people come out of the woodworks, man. I hadn't heard from them in a while, and and uh, you know, were contacting me, telling me good job, and you know, it's like, dang, I'm back in the game now. <laughs> uh, so we'll keep on, you know, keep on going like we are. We still got a lot of work to do to, to uh, you know, to get real dominant. Um, you know, these these are. Uh, Tough group of guys we're racing against, and, and they they do a lot more than we do. So we got to be that much better than they are to be able to beat them. So um, you know everything played out just right down at the Rattler. We finished eighth at uh, at Nashville last weekend. So uh, you know I think we're on, on the right track. We just got to work on a little bit more and, and uh, get things under control. Now, when you were when you were working over at James Finch's. Didn't you drive one of his cars up in New Jersey to win on a road course or something? Well, how that deal worked was uh, Bill bought the car, and uh, you know, this car was one of Casey Kane's uh, cars that he ran at Sonoma. Uh, I forget what year he ran. I think um, I think it was around uh, let's see, 2004 or something like that. But um, he finished third with it, I think, in Sonoma. But it got turned into a uh, ride and drive car. Um, and, you know, it had a passenger seat and everything so they could, you know, take people for rides in or whatever. But Bill found this thing, I think, in Denver, North Carolina. And um, he bought this thing and, and brought it to the shop. That thing was covered by inch of dust. <laughs> and um, washed it down and took that seat out and um, you know I had to do a few upgrades for to be legal for the ARCA uh, on the door bars they wanted us to plate the door bars because back then you know the door bars weren't plated at all so uh, we had to plate the door bars and um, uh, mount my seat in there well yeah that thing ran and, and um, my first race with it was actually in Palm Beach uh, mm -hmm. Florida for the for the Arthur race and uh, qualified on the pole there was leading the race and broke a transmission fourth year um, went out or no first year I'm sorry first year went out on me and uh, uh, and then from there second and then third but uh, so knowing we had a good car and, and um, feeling confident that that I was able to to run these road courses pretty good I. Uh, I wanted to go to New Jersey, so we went there and, and uh, made two laps in practice, blew the motor. Our, our body guy at the shop, he drove all night, Saturday night, 
and uh, got up there by 5.30 Sunday morning, and they, Arky let us in about an hour early uh, before the garage opened. And it took us up until they were introducing the drivers to finish that thing up. And as they were introducing mm -hmm. people, we were rolling up on pit road. That's how close it was. So, mm -hmm. started dead last and ended up winning that race. And uh, that, was, that was probably one of my most memorable uh, uh, races that I that I have. And, uh, and, you know, that race and this Rattler 250, I just won probably my two favorite wins of my career just because of of how hard we work to get there, you know? So, um, well, I hope I get some more races like that. Just maybe, you know, maybe a little easier maybe next time. But <laughs> seems like every time we struggle really bad, um, we end up com coming out on top. So that's, that's a good sign of everybody working hard together. Well, I hope you get I hope you get a shot at coming back again because you do have a lot of talent. I've been around you a lot. I know, I know a lot about you. And I, I really think you deserve another shot, but you know how things are these days, so, you know, it's going to be hard. Right, right. I mean, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, there's there's thousands of kids out there that want to do the same thing I, I want, you know, so, um, you know, it's all who you know, and, uh, you know, creating a, a, a relationship and a, and a contact, you know, that's, it's all about contacts and, and relationships with people. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think I've been able to do that very well, but it's just finding the right person that, that wants to put that kind of money into it, you know. So, um, you know, I wish it was as easy as, you know, going up to a team and say, hey, man, give me a shot, but it's not it's not that way. So, um, you know, we got we to gotta keep working and, uh, and, and don't give up. You know, that's what it's all about. I'm not giving up until... The day I die. <laughs> so, uh, it's, a, it's a tough deal. Not, not everybody can do this. So, uh, there's only 43 spots out there on Sunday. So, everybody wants that spot. But it's tough. So, what, what are your plans for the rest of 2014? What, what have you got going on? Well, we're going to try to run the, uh, the full Soda Super Series. Uh, I think it's like a 16 race uh, schedule. Um, we travel around from Pensacola, Florida, Mobile, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama. Um, we run Nashville two times. Um, we run Gresham here in Georgia, which is going to be our home track. Um, I think that's it for the series. But uh, then we're also going to run the Blizzard series in, uh, in Pensacola, Mobile. So, uh, yeah, but that's all done within the Super Series too. So uh, we're really running for for two point systems down there, you know, in, in Pensacola Mobile. So, um, but I mean, I think we're going to try to go to uh, a couple big races, maybe one up in Michigan uh, at Berlin, the Berlin Two Fifty One. Uh, we're working on that right now, trying to get it penciled in. Um, the World Crown at, at Gresham coming up in August, and Snowball Derby, and all the way to 400. So we're going to try to hit all the big races and also run this full se uh, series. You've run the Snowball Derby a couple times before, haven't you? I've run it once. Once, okay. I was back in I was back in 2010, and David Bowen, which is Anderson Bowen's dad, um, he took me down there with Bill's car. Uh, I borrowed the car from Bill that he built for me. We took that thing down there. We struggled in practice and qualified decent. Qualified like tenth, I think. And uh, I had a shot to win that thing. And um, uh, it was a few laps to go, probably like six laps to go. And we had a caution. I come in and got tires. I think me and Joanna were on with only two cars that come in and got tires uh, under the caution. We come out six and seven. And we went green, and um, we had an immediate caution. I mean, immediately we had another caution. And uh, I, I got underneath, I think his name was Mason Mingus, and uh, when the caution came out, they put me back behind him. Well, the spotter came over to my dad and said, hey, you know, we'll let you have the outside. Uh, we don't want to We don't want to give up the inside because we got old tires. We'll, you know, lose a lot of, a lot of position. So, so right, I'll, I'll take the outside. 
I did that. It worked out great. Caution come out again. So the third attempt, Mason got loose, and I was on the outside, and he got loose, and I think he overcorrected it. And it shot his car back up in front of mine and ripped the nose off of it. Oh, man. It took my chance of the way it went. I think Johanna Long ended up winning that year. Yep. Yep. Well, Casey, give your sponsors a shout out and, and, and anybody you'd like to thank, and uh, we'll let you get back to whatever you were doing tonight. All right. Well, I appreciate it. I think, you know, appreciate y'all letting me have, uh, have a few minutes on your show here, and uh, hopefully we'll get back on here. But uh, I'd like to thank uh, the Grams, uh, Danny and DJ Graham. They've been awesome to me. They let me build a new car we were wearing, and uh, so far it's worked out uh, for us uh, with that new car. So. Uh, thanks to them and um, also the West Virginia Miners up in Beckley, West Virginia. Uh, they're helping us out also. Uh, just everybody involved, you know, that I've, I've dealt with the last few years. Uh, you know, thanks to the uh, I've been able to do a lot of things uh, because of his help. So, uh, and also I want to thank uh, uh, Renee Jones, my mom's best friend. She handles all my marketing and uh, my website. Uh, she built that website, so if you go to it, it's Casey Roger, um, fanclub.com or Casey Roger Motorsports, and uh, you can check out everything I do uh, on my website. So uh, thanks for them. Everything's going going uh, well. So. Well, tell Renee for me. I appreciate. It. I've been trying to. I've been talking to her off and on, trying to get a hold of you. So tell her I appreciate her doing that for me. Yes, sir. I'll, uh, I'll definitely tell her. And look. Don't be a don't be a stranger when I try to get a hold of you anymore. All right? All right, that'll work. That'll work. He's all right. used to a lot of people don't answer his phone call. <laughs> <laughs> hey Casey, don't don't listen to these guys. <laughs> you 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 and our buddies now. We spent that time in Daytona. Now, now. <laughs> yeah, Jack, Jack, all you had to do was ask now, me. Now, so just give me a call whatever you feel like. Okay, man. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> all right, thanks. All right, man. Oh lord. Yeah, after after I. Checked out your number and everything. I went on my phone. I said, "Yep, he's been here before. I already had his numbers." Hey. Oh. Uh. Casey, Casey worked for James Finch for a while. He was in the shop working, and he he was something else. And there's a lot of stories I could tell you, but I won't tell you. Right? Where's sounds going on here? I know. That's why I'm glad I put my own quiet. Not it was. I mean, there's noises everywhere now from everybody's phone. Now, oh, well, Roger just, kept sending me messages. Oh, you. <laughs> he sent me one time, he sent me a message one time, he said, slap Crystal. Uh oh. I love you too, Rod. <laughs> no problem. I love you too. He knows how well he followed directions. Yeah, yeah. Smack your back. Well, he's smart not to. That was a very, very wise decision. But of course, if his oh, name was minute. Pinocchio, he could not turn left or right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, everybody, we had a good time tonight, and we'll catch everybody next week on... Oh, we didn't do our little... Advertising. Oh, yeah, we gotta, do, we gotta do the commercial. Boy, the the Mid Atlantic NASCAR Club. We have a commercial now? Mm -hmm. Well. Then we're back. Okay. See everybody <laughs> next week. Later, guys. Hey, guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Timothy Peters, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs> driver of the 33 NASCAR late model 2011 Old Dominion Speedway track champion thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV I'm Sam Hunt driving 42 car on the thing Let's Talk Racing Hi my name is Natalie Sather I drive the 94 K and N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts number 94 at South Boston Speedway be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing TV